Uh, so my name is Nick Nystrom. I'm at the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center, which is a joint project between Carnegie Mellon and Pitt. And I'm going to give you a very different talk. So I'm from academia. I'm a provider at one of the national NSF supercomputing centers. And we've been pushed by the National Science Foundation over the past few years to really embrace new communities of not traditionally used high performance computing. And many of these are working very much in big data and data intensive computing. So what I'm going to talk today is about several new systems. Um, very briefly, I'm preaching the choir here, but where we've come from are the worlds of structured data that you see in the left column. They're very big, but they're, in our minds, easy to deal with because they're very structured, they're very regular. And where we've moved to is all the areas in the right. We have a front big data with very high variety, social networks, unstructured data, text corpuses, and so on. And because of all that, again, preaching to the choir here, but that means a change in algorithms. These are very different people. They're doing the programming here. Um, they have a very different code base, a very complex code base. It resonates with a lot of the talks we've heard today with having to unroll very different sets of versions. Our objectives are to really bring HPC, because NSF it very much is still an HPC agency, to people who are doing big data. <clears throat> also to allow these HPC concepts to leverage to big data. And we think there's a lot of value to that. And it's complementary to what you get in cloud offerings. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then why I'm talking here is really to support databases. This is something we've had users asking us for for quite a few years, actually. We've found ways to kludge it into our HPC resources in the past. So with this architecture, and these architectures I'm going to describe briefly, uh, we found a way to actually do that and give it to people um, naturally along with everything else. So the two resources I'm going to talk about, the Data XSL is a research pilot that's available now to select projects. And unique to this sort of program within NSF <clears throat> is we actually have funding to have our data scientists help users to develop new approaches. Now Bridges will be the next new NSF supercomputing facility in the country. Um, its schedule will be deployed in January 2016 if all goes well. Um, I don't want to say a lot about this. As I said, it's a research pilot. The idea here, though, is that we have at least one of everything in here that we have in Bridges so people can develop software architectures now that will carry forward. Uh, Bridges is about a $10 million acquisition. There will be another separate acquisition for um, operations and management. Um, we'll start building in the fall. And the main purpose here is to reach out to these new communities. So it will be looking at large scale instruments across the NSF space. And I see those everything from large genome sequencers, high throughput genomics that we've just heard a great talk about from the VA, um, to large scale imaging, um, internet scale data, and so on. And then we'll be interoperating with Exceed, the NSF cyber infrastructure. We have a campus bridging program that's novel to help users actually bring data transparently to and from this resource, and so on. Um, what's really unique about it, though, is we're looking at several ways of making it very different from traditional HPC resources. And so they're listed here. Um, two are highlighted for this conference, but their interactivity, that's uh, people don't want to run in batch. We know that. Um, look at gateways, ways of letting large numbers of people do analytics, leverage large community data sets, having native databases supported by de dedicated hardware within the resource, high productivity programming languages, including Hadoop and all that ecosystem, and so on. Um, remote scan of control here. Um, very briefly, there's a poster on this. It, it is a 3W, so I'll be outside afterward. Um, the architecture is based on a really a three tiers of very large coherent shared memory nodes, 12 terabytes, three terabytes, and 100, 120 gigabytes, and there will be about 440 and 800 of those nodes respectively. So it's actually a fairly sizable resource. And what I should note is these are actually free of charge to people doing open research. And on top of all this, there will be a large central file system with very high bandwidth. There's the laser. And there will also be distributed node, lo node local storage. And a lot of it resonates to the things we just heard about bringing compute to the storage or vice versa. And so that will be supported. Um, I'm running low on time, but what I want to say is that we've been presenting this to a number of groups who are very interested in it. And so, for instance, examples of applications will be using it. 
In Pittsburgh, there's a Pittsburgh Genome Resource Repository, which is right now containing about one petabyte of Cancer Genome Atlas data, and a Center for Causal Discovery, which is an NIH Big Data Knowledge Center of Excellence. So again, um, see me outside. I'll be by 3W.